guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Cal, and today I'm going to be showing you what I believe are the top five homes that every ESO player should own. It's a question that I've been asked a number of times, both in-game by friends and guildmates, and on my channel. For new players, and players who just aren't that interested in ESO housing, why should you own a home? And there's a number of good reasons. Not only do houses in ESO provide a free port back to town from whatever delve or dungeon you happen to be stuck in, but you'll also have access to that town's resources, services, merchants, banker, crafting table, etc. Now with that being said, not every town in ESO is created equal. Some are going to provide access to more services than others, and as a result, some houses are going to be better to purchase than others. Okay, so here are the top five houses I believe every ESO player should own. And the good news is, all of these homes are pretty cheap, with the most expensive one coming in at just 56,000 gold, and a couple of them you can get for free. Okay, let's count them down from number five to number one. Number five, the Golden Griffin Garret in Alinor. Alinor is the hub city of the Somerset expansion, and as such, comes with all the amenities you would expect in any major city in the game. Not only does this in-room provide excellent access to the Stable Master, Merchants, Banker, and Crafting Stations, but you'll also have access to the Battle Master, the Event Merchant, and the Outlaw's Refuge. And if you have a character that hasn't completed the Intro to Housing quest and unlocked a free in-room, you can get this one for free. The only real downside to this particular in-room is that it's on the opposite side of the city from the Way Shrine and the Crafting Stations. So it's a little bit of a jog, but still provides great access to all these services. Number four, the Flaming Nyx Deluxe Garret in Mournhold. Mournhold is the capital of the Ebonheart Pact, and as such is one of the major trading hubs in ESO. Not only does this apartment provide access to all the amenities of a capital city, but you'll probably find yourself coming to Mournhold often if you do any trading on the guild traders as some of the biggest trading guilds are based out of Mournhold. Now, as an apartment, you can't get the Flaming Nyx for free, but it does only cost 13,000 gold, which makes it very reasonable for even new players to pick up. And that's going to get you a lot more furnishing slots if you happen to be interested in decorating or setting up your own crafting stations within the apartment itself. The only real downside to Mournhold is that the crafting stations are broken up into different buildings. Other than that, this is a great place to call home. Number three, Captain Margot's place in Daggerfall. Now Daggerfall isn't the capital of the Covenant, but this is still a great town to have a house in. Daggerfall still offers access to all the standard amenities you'd find in any major town in ESO. And while it's not a capital city and therefore doesn't have seven guild traders, there's still a lot of guild trading happening here, so it's a good city to have access to with a quick port. The captain's house here does count as a small home, and as a result, it's a little bit more expensive than the other two I've shown so far. At 56,000 gold, this might be out of reach for a brand new player, but by the time you're pushing champion levels, it should be within your reach to purchase. This house gets bonus points for being so close to the banker, but it also suffers from having crafting stations split up across the city. Number two, the Sugar Bowl Suite in Rimen. Rimen serves as the hub city for the Elsewhere expansion, and as a result, it has all the amenities you'd expect. One of the reasons I really love this in-room is because, unlike the other in-rooms in ESO, it actually has an exterior door. So right on the other side of that door, you have access to the Way Shrine and the rest of the city. You don't have to go through a second door, which means uh, as of the last patch, you can now teleport outside the, the in-room itself and be right there next to the Way Shrine. Now, as an in-room, you can get this one for free as well if you have a character that hasn't completed the intro to housing quest. Uh, if not, it's only 3,000 gold, so another cheap and easy one to pick up. Rimen has one of the best crafting setups in the game, with all of the crafting stations out in the open air, right next to the writ boards, and the writ turn -in isn't too far away. In my opinion, the only real downside of the Sugar Bowl Suite is that it requires the Elsewhere expansion to purchase. And the number one house I think every ESO player should own Snug Pod in Elden Root. Elden Root is, of course, the capital of the Aldmeri Dominion, meaning that Snug Pod provides access to all the same amenities as Captain Margot's place. However, Snug Pod is more centrally located within the city, with the Stable Master, Outlaw's Refuge, and Undaunted Enclave right outside the door. Snug Pod does qualify as a small home, so it comes in a little bit more expensive than the inns and apartment on this list at 45,000 gold but that should be within reach for most ESO players within their first couple months of play. If you've got the coin to spare, there's really no reason to refrain from purchasing Snugpot. 
Alright guys, so that's my list of the top 5 homes I believe every ESO player should own, whether you're into housing or not. And I think the best part is that for 120,000 gold, you can actually get all 5 of these. Even if you can only afford to pick up one or two of these homes today, it'll still mean that all of your characters have access to a free port to a major city, which is going to make your life a lot easier in the Elder Scrolls Online. And who knows, maybe you'll even find that you enjoy furnishing these homes, and then you can get into the real end game. If you're looking for furnishing inspiration, I've actually published videos for how to furnish several of these homes, which I'll have linked at the end of this video. So what do you think? Did I skip your favorite house? Did I miss a home that you think should be in the top five? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me today. I'm Cal. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.